and there we go. Okay, uh, before we start, I just wanted to read from, uh, you know, Proverbs 31. And, uh, you know, um, this, these are the words written by King Lemuel, right? Proverbs last, uh, many times we always think that uh, it probably it's, it was written by, uh, written, yeah, it was written by a man. It was definitely, you know, captured by man. But then look at verse 1. It says, the words of King Lemuel, the utterance of which his mother taught him, right? So about this Proverbs 31 woman, it was actually shared. That, that wisdom was actually shared by his mother, right, to King Lemuel. Okay. Uh, but the point is this. When you look at the verse, verses 2, 3, and 4, it says, what my son, what son of my womb, what son of my vows, do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to whom him who is perishing and wine to him who are those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and Remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Right, verse 9. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. So uh, the beginning of the chapter is, is a warning um, how this judging righteously and pleading the cause of the poor and needy can actually be perverted and how it can be distorted when those who are in leadership and those who are called to be leaders, position of power and leadership, when they when they actually give away their judgment, like give away the ability to judge righteously, and it happens in many ways. So some are listed right when it's lust, when it's uh, uh, a desire for intoxicating drink. Now that's going to, and it's very plain, right? So these and many other ways by which we distort our judgment. So his mother actually shares this wisdom and uh, as a warning, you know, do not do not give away your strength. Do not give away your ability to judge righteously. Do not give away your ability to plead the cause for the one uh, who's poor and needy, the one who is speechless, right? So, it, and it is also the same with us. You know, all of us are called uh, to be leaders, in, to be in, and the Lord places us in positions of influence and um, impact. So, it is possible that we give away that ability to do it well, the ability to do it um, the way God wants us to do it, you know, to judge righteously and so on, and uh, and uh, to give away that strength, right? So it's a, it's a warning for us not to do that and how not to do it, right? So, so let's pray and um, let's commit ourselves into his mighty hands and say, Lord, um, yes, thank you for the strength, the ability um, you've given me in, the, in, the, in my sphere of influence. And thank you for this warning that I should guard myself and uh, really guard my strength. And uh, of course, in to the New Testament believer, you know, we can say the abilities that God has given, the call that he has given, um, the things that he's put in our hearts, the revelation, you know, not to give it away, not to squander it away, but to guard it and to use it. Right. So let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you that uh, for these, God, uh, thoughts in your word, Master. We thank you for warning us. Thank you for reminding us who we are, Lord, that we are people of influence. We are the salt. We are the light. We are the people of impact. And that's how you have designed us and created us in our spheres of influence, Lord. It could be one person, it could be 10, it could be more, but God, you have placed us, Lord, strategically, significantly, Lord, and uh, thank you that, God, 
even as you placed us, we are like a city on a hill, God, which cannot be hidden. So it cannot be hidden from you. So people are watching, people are listening, and people are trying to follow God in their search for answers, God. And so, Lord, I, I pray that uh, that we will not squander away, that we will not give away our strength, God. We will, uh, but we will guard it and we will be on guard and uh, walk righteously and do things in a righteous manner, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise at this time and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Um, let's get uh, let's continue from where we uh, stopped last class. We're looking at um, you know, leading through time, and the section that we looked at was um, um, about how we need to plan and how we need to organize ourselves. Right, that's that's where we stopped. Um, how we need to uh, organize ourselves, and we looked at some of the um, guidelines for planning. And in that, we said, okay, we need to. Uh, organize ourselves and and uh, the first thing that we saw was that we need to organize the peop people right uh, ministry we know it does not happen in a vacuum it is with people it is uh, for people and like um, god sees that and he says you know you are god's um, like paul says to the Corinthian church you know you are god's field you are god's building so and um, all the sowing watering and reaping um, it's it's all about people. It's, uh, yeah, so we need to if we are if God is interested people in our hands, then we need to organize, right? organize for focus, for clarity, for impact. So first thing that we need to do is organize our church or ministry uh, in terms of how we are reaching out, and we looked at that. Okay, uh, how, how do we organize ourselves internally? How do we organize ourselves, um, you know, based on who we are reaching internally and who are we, who we are reaching externally, right? In our outreach and missions and so on. Then second thing we said was we need to organize our people. So um, uh, ministry leaders, they could be team leaders. And um, we also have people who are serving as volunteers. So we need to uh, get that bit organized in the sense uh, maybe in terms of appointing leaders, in uh, in terms of uh, appointing teams, uh, and so on. So we we do that, uh, and also then we have people who are volunteering to serve. You know, who's coming forward to say, okay, I, I'd like to be part of this. I'd like to be part of this vision. Right? I'd like to be part of uh, what this church or this church ministry is doing, um, and uh, also you know, it's not just church or ministry, but it could be anything. I'd like to be part of this vision, part of what we're doing. So uh, we need to get uh, that group also, that section of people also organized okay, in terms of uh, uh, you know, what everyone needs to do, defining the vision for them, communicating the vision to them, uh, reiterating that, uh, and maybe you know enabling people to, um, uh, or and training people in the areas that they need to be involved in and so on, right? So uh, so that's the second area of uh, getting ourselves organized. Uh, the third one is when we need to organize uh, uh, our resources, OK? So when we look at our resources, we see that, uh, well, there are many resources that uh, you know, God puts in our, into our lives. And we looked at people, people are a resource, um, their skills, their abilities, and so on. And uh, one of the resources that, uh, you know, most uh, neglected resource is time. Right? Time is an uh, amazing resource that God has given us. And, uh, and we need to really steward that well. And uh, the the way to steward it is to organize it. Okay, it's a it's what we could call an, a non renewable resource, right? Um, what scripture does say, you know, walk circumspectly, redeeming the time, you know, as if to take back. Uh, but we know that it's a it's a non renewable resource. It's it keeps ticking, it keeps flowing, and we can't put it back into the jar once it's flowed out. Right. But we have more of it uh, available for us. So uh, how do we do this? 
uh, it's, it's it is a valuable resource so we need to make sure that uh, it is used well it is stewarded well okay um so planning in advance okay if you look at the screen we see that planning in advance always helps right so if you look at our time well it is uh, divided you know into years and into months and days and minutes and seconds and so on so um, so these are you know for convenience sake we, we have this so we can use this well we can break it down and use it well so we can have uh, you know um, if we are in a let's say in a church kind of a ministry or even otherwise we can plan ahead plan ahead for the year we can plan for a you know for the entire year what are some things? So it can, can this planning flows from the vision, of course, you know, everything from the vision, from the goals that we have for in achieving that vision for this particular year, uh, 2023 maybe. Uh, and uh, so we break it down into what are some of those things that we are doing, right? Maybe it's a church. Okay, what is the outreach that we are doing? Uh, when are we going to do it? So you have the annual calendar for that uh, we can look at uh, how, how are we building our people and uh, which means that how are, what are we you know nurturing people with the, that is the word in the spirit so so what are the things some of the things that we are going to be looking at we're going to be teaching uh, in this coming year so we have a, a plan for that and break it down uh, in our annual calendar right so it's uh, all listed down and uh, everything okay this month we are targeting this so uh, each month is listed what are we going to do and also um, each each week you know, typically if it's a church ministry uh, every sunday counts that's the that's when everybody's gathering and that's when that's a valuable time you know people are willing to come and spend that time together so that can be used well so uh, so everything uh, needs to be planned of course well god might rearrange these things a bit right we might have to there could be some contingencies that that could happen because of which we might have to rearrange things you might have to cancel a few things we might have to take on a few other things and maybe you know uh, swap something substitute something with something else and that all that is fine but it's good to have that plan for the entire year so that um, everyone who's part of the vision also knows and understands and more so for the ministry team right if you have a ministry team which is comprised of uh, pastors who are teaching going to be ministering uh, and others you know, other functional teams like those who are in charge of organizing things you know, organizing each meeting uh, maybe there's a sound and setup team. Maybe there's uh, the media team, which takes care of the the the, the media, the, the audio, the video. I'm sorry, the video uh, that goes on, the the images, the PowerPoint, and and maybe the live streaming that happens, and all that. You know, the tech stuff which goes beyond behind uh, communicating or communication of a particular message. So all that uh, people who are involved in all that, they can also plan. Right, so organizing our time with the calendar annually, monthly, weekly, and uh, you know, at, at a personal level, right? We need to have daily things as well, okay? To track, to complete, to track things daily, you know, to see, okay, this month, this is where we are going, or this week, this is where we are, what we what needs to be done. So all these daily tasks actually add up to it or need to add up to it. Okay, so uh, you know we're going to be looking at priorities and so on. So, so the thing is, if the daily task is not adding up or is not contributing towards reaching that goal, we need to really question that. We need to kind of. Uh, look at it and uh, reflect on it and see um, you know it, it's not really contributing i can't see it you know contributing to reaching this uh, do i need to continue do i need to continue doing this is it something that's going to be of value maybe sometime later right uh, i don't know but we need to you know, ask ourselves that question and see if okay if if it needs to be dropped 
maybe we just need to drop it and say, okay, I'm not, I'm, I'm just going to discontinue doing this because it is not contributing because there's a, there's a, you know, there's a chunk of time, maybe, uh, maybe three hours, four hours is going towards this and it's not really contributing. It's not really, really, you know, it could be anything and it could be, it could be rest. It could be, you know, it could be that, that, that three or four hours, you know, it could be uh, that, it could be entertainment. It could be, you know, all that, that is, you know, that's needed for a person to function well, um, rest and work and, you know, health and all that. So if it's, it is not, if it is actually, you know, taking us away from uh, what God wants for us, then we need to question then we need to evaluate and make changes right so at a personal level our daily things our daily to-do lists our weekly to-do lists really help us um, track things and complete the tasks at hand right um okay um then the other thing that we need to organize is the other resource that we need to organize is our money Okay, finances. And as leaders, you know, we, we need to be aware and we need to be able to practice this in our own lives. Okay, um, so to the organization that we lead or the ministry that we lead, um, we are accountable first and foremost to God himself. Right? So, um, and we are also accountable to man, right? to steward this resource which is money, which is finances, we need to steward it well. Okay. Um, we know that in ministry, people contribute you know, to, through tithes and offerings and other contributions and, uh, and so on. If, it is an, if it's not a ministry, then, well, probably it's goods and services that uh, any organization is involved in. And, uh, you know, you are selling, you are buying, you are... You know, we're not getting into it, that aspect of it. But, you know, if you are, uh, you know, as a businessman, as a working professional, then you are involved in all this. So that needs to be stewarded well as well. Right. So how do we organize our finances? OK, the, the simple thing is to have processes, have steps in place to make sure that there is proper accounting. Now, we may not be skilled in accounting. And as a leader, we may not be skilled in accounting, we may not be knowledgeable in accounting, but we can always, um, you know, have someone who is skilled, we can always take someone on board, maybe as a volunteer, right, uh, volunteer to uh, take someone on board to uh, to take care of that accounting aspect. Okay, I see a question here. Uh, are there any suggestions for tools for any application services used for organizing time? Uh, and resources that we can streamline it better. Okay. Um, yeah, I actually have that. And probably during the break, I will, uh, I will take that and uh, you know share that uh, with us. Um, so there is a tool for planning that is, uh, it's called uh, Peter Bregman's. Uh, it's a template. You know, eighteen minutes template. Uh, every eighteen minutes. Uh, I mean, I, I use that, and it's it's quite effective. Uh, I'll share that. Uh, I'll share that. I'll put it on the stream. So that is for, um, yeah, that is something that uh, that is quite effective, and um, yeah, we can use that for time, uh, for planning our time. Uh, otherwise, a simple calendar, an Excel sheet is a great tool. And you have an Excel sheet. You have uh, even for budgeting uh, that we're talking about uh, finances. Uh, that's a, that's good enough. You can use an Excel sheet, um, and for our uh, daily. For a monthly uh, a calendar would would help, and a daily thing. This Peter Bregman's uh, to do list really is helpful. Yeah, I'll, I'll share about that in a bit. Yeah. So when we look at uh, finances, this the the simple thing is, you, you know, whatever money comes in to the organization to the team, okay, needs to be recorded. So if, if that's the simple thumb rule, and right? whatever goes out needs to be recorded. Okay, so whatever comes in needs to be recorded in the sense uh, there needs to be a time and there needs to be a date. There needs to be how much, you know, you can't just say approximately, you know, because it's money, it can be counted. You don't need to approximate it. So it has to be to the uh, 
to the you know to the rupees and paisa you know to your if, you're, if it's your currency you know dollars and cents or, or whatever your currency is you know it it needs to be accounted every little bit okay um it needs to be recorded maybe in a in some kind of a register and since it's an organization obviously it needs to be you know kept safe so in a bank um, that's the logical thing you know you have a bank account for the organization for the church for the ministry and everything needs to go in okay so there are uh, you know there are things that actually help us in the sense there are records of proof now since things are online you have a record of it you have an online statement um and also some of the hard copies like when you make a deposit you know these are you know you would all obviously be de depositing a check or you would be depositing cash uh in terms of hard currency so there would be a deposit slip in which you enter okay uh you know let's say it's a thousand uh, or two thousand rupee note so you actually enter how many two thousand rupee notes are there right so it would typically look like this i'll just put it on the chat so um two thousand rupee notes into 10 that's uh, equals 20 thousand and maybe there were a uh, hundred rupee notes 100 into say 50 so that's No, in the, in this manner, you actually mention it right in the in. It, it's good to mention it in your register. It's good to and uh, obviously in the bank you will definitely have to mention that. Uh, the bank would require that, so you mention that, and then you have your copy. The organization has its copy, so you have your copy, um, which is filed and kept for accounting purposes, right? So this is a very simple way, but uh, it is uh, it is important it's an important record that we need to keep um also uh, I, I, you'll be learning more about this in church uh, administration so i'm not getting into it so when it comes to counting you know always have maybe two to three people count it uh, never one person um so and so on right so uh, for the sake of accountability and for the check and balance so one might make a mistake, the other one can actually correct it. So it's two people are better than one. So that's the thing, you know. Um, yeah, so um, you make, uh, uh, you keep a record of it. And the second thing is, whenever, whatever you spend, whatever you, you, is it's spent on, uh, that also needs to be, there needs to be a record of that as well. So if you're spending it on whatever rent of the building, uh, if it's an expense towards electricity, if it's towards water, if it's towards um, you know refreshments, uh, if it's towards printing, you know, if it's towards stationery, uh, maybe it's towards internet, phone calls, you know, all these are used you know, in uh, in day to day life in ministry. So uh, maybe subscriptions for certain websites. Uh, maybe servers because you're hosting your website on those servers. So all these things, uh, there needs to be a proof. There needs to be a record. It's it's not imp it's not enough to just put in the register and say, uh, okay, I spent five hundred rupees uh, towards you know this expense. But you also need to have the proof of that. Okay, um, because what if it's five thousand and uh, you're writing five hundred, right? Uh, but you've spent five thousand on it, uh, or maybe it's it's only five hundred, and you put an extra zero there, five thousand, right? So there needs to be the proof, that, uh, which is an invoice or a bill, which says which has the uh, you know all the details on this day it was this much was spent for this purpose, right? And for most things, uh, there is a record, there is a bill. Right, we can we can have a bill. We can get a bill. Um, there could be certain things for which we you know small amounts for which we cannot we may not be able to get get a bill. But even that you know uh, since these days everybody uses um, uh, the phone to make payment. You scan and you know you have a record of it um, on your phone. You have a record of it for which it was it was used. So it is possible to get a bill or even a simple handwritten note is is possible. so it's it it helps to record 
and uh, and to steward that well. So um, it's important that we have this in place. So our finances are organized, and uh, we have a good grip on on our spending, on our expenditure, uh, and so it helps with our budgeting. Uh, also, it is it is a it is a way to say you know, be thankful to God, and it's a way to uh, be accountable to God and to be accountable to the people who contribute. When we actually um, present it, present a statement or publish a statement uh, for for people and say, okay, this is what it was used for. So people can check anytime and they can trust the ministry, trust the leader or the leadership. Right? But if it's all, you know, if it's all hazy, if it's all gray, we don't know where the money's going, we don't know how it's spent, uh, there's always a doubt in people's minds and they're not able to trust. Okay, and uh, we might say, okay, you know, you need to trust the church, you need to trust the ministry, you're giving to God, all that is fine. But how will they reciprocate that trust? You know, uh, I mean, or how will they display the trust if they are not clear? So this is to help them and not to put up any barrier or not put a cause of concern, cause for doubt, uh, a cause for pointing fingers, right? And and uh, because of which the ministry is blamed. And uh, Paul is very clear in his epistles. He says, you know, we, you know what manner of life uh, we lived so that our ministry should not be blamed. So uh, it's very, very clear the manner of life, which and uh, more so when it comes to you know finances and this is one of the things where you know people uh, who, who who can actually easily point and saying you know this is very extravagant you're wasting money and and so on people can point fingers uh, both in the church or outside of the church right and god's name is dishonored because of it because of people who abuse uh, the money that has actually been contributed. So uh, we need to use it wisely. We need to uh, you know, do it well. So organizing our finances uh, is also finances being one of the resources, right? So we looked at people, we looked at uh, the ministry itself and people and time and uh, finances, okay? So to get it organized uh, is very, very important. And um, that role or that responsibility uh, comes to the leader okay so we need to be uh, we need to understand okay this is uh, yeah this is my uh, responsibility okay no one else is going to do it this is my responsibility either i do it myself or i delegate it and get it done okay but there, there's no escaping this um, responsibility right okay so the next thing that we we want to look at as as part of leaders uh, as part of the leadership responsibility um uh the leader's responsibility is also to develop other people right uh, whether it's in you know their, their call to help them discover the call to help them help them discover the gifting uh to help them grow in it uh, that's the uh, that's the responsibility of the leader to develop leaders um, so that the tasks, uh, the responsibilities can be shared and uh, certain things can be delegated and handed over uh, so that other leaders can take care of, carry the load and share the load. Right? Um, when, uh, if you look at uh, you know, Paul's epistle in Galatians, um, Paul talks about how he went and met the leaders in Jerusalem. Um, and this is what he says, you know, uh, in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 18, he says, After three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, uh, remained with him 15 days, and I saw none of the other apostles except James the Lord's brother. And if, as we go to uh, the, the second chapter, um, so then Paul says, uh, uh, in verse nine, you know, he's again talking about his experience, going to Jerusalem, meeting um, the uh, the apostles, and so on. And uh, he says, after fourteen years, I went again to Jerusalem. You know, that's in chapter two. In chapter two, verse nine, he says, and when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me. 
they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles uh, and they to the circumcised. Right. So, uh, so Paul makes mention they seemed to be pillars. Okay. Uh, who are the, who are the, uh, he names them? And he says James, Peter, and John, and they seemed to be pillars. Pillars of what? Pillars of the house of God. Right. Pillars of that ministry or pillars of the church. So we know what a pillar does. Pillar actually enables, pillar gives stability to the building, to the structure, and pillar takes care of, you know, the uh, uh, gives the strength to the en entire building. So that is why we have pillars. So the bigger the width and height, we need to have pillars and beams, and we cannot do away with it. Right. So we need to have pillars. So pillars are important for the for the building for the structure. If you want a bigger building, if you want a bigger, uh, you know, stronger building, and uh, as as important the foundation is, so also the the pillars. Right. So he's saying uh, these seem to be pillars. So the pillars are leaders, or leaders are pillars, right? And um, it's important for leaders to develop others to be leaders. Okay, to raise up leaders and people who are faithful people who are committed uh, the responsibility of the leader is to nurture okay? to nurture to mature others to bring them to the level of leadership okay so uh, well there are many people who are there and uh, to be developed into leaders so here are some characteristics okay so here are some characteristics that one needs to uh, watch out for or spot in um, in others who could be potential leaders. Okay, so okay, these people have leadership potential, so they can be developed into leaders. Okay, so um, so here are some things. You know, there, there could be more, but we are looking at a few here. The first one is personal life example, which means that uh, does this person, you know. Uh, who is a believer? Okay, this is what they believe in. Do they live out? You know, not on Sundays, not on you know uh, certain days, but do they live out daily what they believe in? Okay, which means that okay, they believe that um, they are believers. They are they they say that they love the Lord. Say. Uh, that they worship, that uh, the word of God means something to them. Do they follow this in their daily life? Okay. Are they consistent? What is their life like? So this is their personal life example. Okay. Now this needs to be there. Their testimony, their life. Um, so that's the that's the thing. That's a very basic thing. Right, so uh, if it is not there yet, then yes, they they need to be given time. Right, so that's the thing. Uh, not everybody will will be fine. Enough. Some some people could be just very new, young believers, immature, need to grow. Okay, so but this is something which is which which is required, which is basic, the personal life example. Okay, the second one is spiritual and emotional maturity. Okay, so maturity meaning. Uh, coming to a level of completeness. Okay, they're not perfect, but they come to a level of uh, uh, of maturity or uh, completeness in their lives. So they know how to take care of uh, themselves spiritually. Okay, so uh, meaning and also emotionally, right? So they are stable in that, consistent and stable in that in these areas. So spiritually, they know. Okay, this, these are some things. Their disciplines of worship and prayer and word and and it is something that is ingrained in them right they know how to uh, read the word of god they know how to you know uh, feed themselves on the word of god um, they are dependent on the word of god and prayer and everything is part of their lives right so spiritually emotionally they are mature also emotionally when you look at it you know they've they've actually uh, grown to such a to a level that uh, they don't need constant affirmation. Now, they're not pursuing these accolades and recognition. Uh, they're not just going 
you know, uh, and doing things so that people will uh, applaud them or people will uh, say nice things about them. They don't want to do things in order to be popular, okay? In order to have uh, some kind of popularity and um, and recognition, etc. So they're doing things because things need to be done. Right? They take care of things. And it's not for so that people will recognize, so that they can be pe popular with people. Okay, so emotionally also they are mature. Okay, now uh, while we look at this, you know all these uh, characteristics. Now we need to understand that people will not, you know, people will take time, right, to come to this level. So people will uh, um, definitely not be perfect, right. And they could be in different levels of maturity. There will always be scope for growth. What we are looking at, you know, uh, especially with emotional uh, maturity, um, to such an extent that, um, well, it does not actually interfere with their daily functioning. Okay? The daily functioning, they're able to uh, do things uh, effectively. They are also able to, you know, one of the other things is uh, we're going to look at is that they need to be able to take care of others right uh, nurture others now this emotional and spiritual maturity uh, has to be the maturity level has to be uh, so that they are able to do this for others as well nurture others as well so that is what we are looking at you know that level of maturity and that level of emotion emotional and spiritual maturity okay, okay then it's a very important thing third one is alignment okay so what does that mean that means that are they agreeing or in line with the vision? The first of all, the vision of the organization, the vision of the church, the vision of the ministry. Okay, are they aligned to that, or do they have a completely different vision altogether? Which is fine, you know, because God has called them, and maybe God has you know, imprinted that in their hearts, saying, "Okay, this is what you need to do." Okay, maybe something to do in, uh, you know, maybe the church is all about urban and, you know, missions and all that. But then, then maybe they're here, you know, this person, this leader uh, or potential leader has a completely different vision altogether. So uh, if it is not in line, then we need to, uh, we need to understand that. God has a different plan for this person. Well, they can be part of it, and you know, but with regard to leadership, with regard to you know certain things, maybe it's they are not the right person. Maybe they they are called to do something on their own. Maybe they are called to do something with you know someone else uh, altogether. We need to respect that. Right? Uh, it's not like we are enemies or anything, but it's just that they are different, and they they need to they God wants them to do something else. So there's no there's no point in forcing them and holding them back and and trying to conform them to you know to this right. Uh, well, if their heart is not in it, if their heart is not aligned to the vision, then it's not going to really work out right. It's so and so. Uh, the mistake we might make is okay. One day probably they'll come aligned. Uh, it's it's not going to happen, and it's it's very very risky uh, because uh, they're going to lead a lot of people uh, away from the church or the organization. And 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 you know, as a leader, you know, you don't necessarily you know you you don't you should not do that. Right? You don't want a potential leader to be in that place of or uh, you know. Uh, in that place of leadership, sorry, and uh, not aligned to the vision, you don't want to do that because because God given vision is this, and you want people to be aligned to that vision so that we can grow together. Okay, so vision, uh, and also the teaching, the values, the culture of the church. You know, I'm saying church, but it could be a you know, team, it could be uh, organ ministry, uh, maybe an NGO, whatever. You know the the teachings. The direction in which the organization is going, the values, the standards. The, if the, if they are not in line with that, not aligned to that, then again, that's an issue. So, so the thing is to share, right? And initially, also, you know, we're going to look at that initial stage. What do you do? Growth stage. What do you do with the, with someone who is you know who needs to be nurtured to a leadership position? So, how do you do that? So, if the alignment is not there, then 
that we need to you know think and maybe we maybe that person is meant for something else okay certain other attributes responsibility you know do they take their role will they take up the role with a sense of commitment seriousness are they responsible for it you know if one day they say that they will come and they don't show up and uh, no explanation is given and no you know nothing they just continue as if nothing happened then then there's a very serious flaw right there's a serious problem uh, because they they lack responsibility and uh, you know, as a leader, you need to be responsible because you're going to be responsible for certain tasks, responsible for certain things and uh, to be done. And you're carrying a weight, right? And you can't just put that weight or, you know, let go of that weight. You're carrying a weight of responsibility. And uh, it's very important. The person needs to be responsible, okay? Um, and these are certain things that we will look for, you know, any team, any team, any organization will say, oh, is that person responsible? Can I give the company's uh, assets into their hands? Uh, if it's an accountant, you know, we'll be dealing with money. Can I trust this person? Is this person responsible or is it irresponsible? Is this person going to be very responsible? I give them the card, the company card and everything and all that. And how are they going to use it? Right. The next one close, closely related is reliability. Okay. Can this is this person dependable? Is this person reliable? Okay, because you're entrusting an, an entire maybe uh, functioning of a particular team, right? Functioning of a particular area of ministry into that person's hands. So, are they reliable? Okay, will they get the work done, or will they always come up with excuses as to why? This was not done. You know, there are always uh, valid reasons you know, for certain things, how certain things, could, why certain things could not be done. But you know, was the effort made and, and so on? Okay, so uh, that's another question. Practically, how long does it take to identify potential leaders? You know, it depends, right? Uh, it really, it really depends uh, on the person and also their interaction. Uh, and the involvement, you know, the level of involvement. And sometimes, like let's say we um, we we don't see them at all. We just see them once a month, and then you know that really doesn't give us uh, uh, enough time to uh, or enough um, uh, opportunity to actually evaluate. Right? So it it really depends on that. Um, but um, yeah, so. Uh, so we can we can we can in our interactions in our day to day uh, or maybe week to week interactions if we're looking at a particular ch church ministry um we can find out maybe you know 3 4 months maybe 6 months um yeah we can easily find out uh, some it's very very okay uh, also when a person doesn't show up on time do we take the first step in asking them or do we wait for them to inform us? Okay, let's say they come late, and uh, uh, it, it's all like it was good to ask why. Hey, what happened? You know, not in a you know not in a very uh, what do you call uh, condemning manner, but genuinely interested in why. You know, there could be some there could be some very valid reason why they are late. Um, so uh, it's good if we take the initiative and find out if they are not saying, you know, if they are not communicating why they didn't, it's good to just find out uh, what happened. Because uh, then the person also knows that, uh, yeah, I'm supposed to be there. And uh, this leader, this person, this leader, uh, you know, is serious about me coming on time. Because if we, if you don't ask, um, you know, even in a friendly manner, if you don't ask, hey, what happened? You know, you were supposed to be there. Then uh, the person will assume that it's okay. You know, it's a it's a a non-verbal uh, kind of a thing. You know, uh, oh, okay, it's accepted. It's fine. Nobody's going to ask anything. It's okay for me to come late. And then uh, it's going to be very difficult for that person to come on time. You know, the person just takes it for granted that nobody nobody's going to question. Nobody's going to ask me anything. Right? Um, yeah, so Isaac has a question. You've raised your hand, Isaac. If you have a question, you can you can ask. 
No, sir, no, sir, no question, sir. No question. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so John, does that help, John? Um, uh, yes, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes, um, mm. as you mentioned, uh, when a person doesn't show up, and um, if we don't ask, they won't <laughs> say, and uh, it might become a habit, as you mentioned. Yeah. 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 So it's uh, it's good to like generally ask. Um, and some people have some problems, you know, like in the sense, maybe they're taking some medication for some allergy because of which, you know, all those things, it's good to find out. And some have a problem you know, because they all, they normally do late nights and they have a problem waking up. So these are practical things. So it's it's good to like, even give them suggestions. Okay, can I ask someone to give you a wake-up call? Uh, things like that. And uh, normally you know, it should get sorted. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Pastor, one more uh, question. Yeah. Um, so let's say we we see a person and we kind of start thinking that okay, um, he might be interested uh, in helping in this, some areas. Yeah. But um, you know the the way they interact at the beginning of uh, the season, and after some time, um, <laughs> we don't see anything. So mm. uh, we don't see anything in the sense no communication, uh, no information. Uh, sometimes won't uh, turn up for service or anything of that sort. Um, so we can still take a step back or should we uh, check a uh, not being seen you or <laughs> uh, anything mm. of that sort. Yeah, I mean, as leaders, I think it's it's good for us too because, you know, these are people who are, who are in a way, I, I would say, okay, let's say God has entrusted them to us. Um, there's always, uh, you know, if you look at, um, they're all they're always the core you know the inner circle who are always you know who are sold out to the vision who are helping then we might have the committed ones uh, but who are, who are not part of the core thing you know uh, you can't really share your burden but they're committed uh, then we have the community which means that uh, they serve once in a while and then the outer circle is uh, is the crowd you know the visitors uh, so they might come, they might not. So I'm talking about a typical church scenario. So you have the crowd, you have the community, then you have the committed, and then the core. Um, so that normally just will helps us. Okay, there are these kinds of things. You no, know, it's so just because people are a crowd does not mean that um, you know they uh, they are bad people. Uh, just that you know in this season they are a crowd, right? So we can just give them time opportunity always make it available and then they will move so your question is okay what if uh, you know we, we had great we, we thought okay uh, in, because of the initial interaction you know, they will move from that crowd to the core very quickly but that unfortunately you know uh, didn't happen um, uh, we can always ask you know because there there are certain things which actually cause people to distance themselves you know it could be their interaction with someone else uh, in the church it could be something they are you know they're finding it difficult maybe it's a teaching there maybe it's a doctrine um, something there could be a number of reasons so it's it's good to ask and to check you know a, a how's it it could be their schedule um, because of which uh, you know they're not uh, able to serve etc and it's uh, it's good to find out and uh, and continue to give opportunities, uh, you know, not critical ones, but uh, opportunities to serve, you know, saying, okay, this is open, you're, you're welcome. You may not be able to lead the team, you know, that, that of course we understand, but you're welcome to come and serve and then, yeah. Okay, one more question before we take a break. How does one gain confidence and trust of the leader? Okay, uh, gaining confidence and trust is, uh, is again, time. And uh, it, uh, it, uh, the, it depends on us being consistent. You know, suppose my leader needs to gain my confidence, uh, or has to co have confidence in me and trust me. Then, which means that uh, it is based on you know whatever was entrusted. If I bring it to completion, uh, and I do that uh, consistently, and also in you know uh, even when things were difficult, things were, uh, and also uh, the thing is like. Uh, um and all these qualities you know we're going to look at the other uh, other attributes also that 
I display that, right? So that happens. That happens. Um, examples. Okay, can we take a break and then come, Divya? We we'll look at the examples and also that to-do list. I'll share that once we come back, right? Yes, sure. So, Thank you, Pastor. Okay, sure. right.